the revolution in the pity. How many of you know anything about what happened during the American Revolution in the PD? Raise your hand. Okay. All right, y'all right, can go. Okay? Um, this is kind of like a beginner's course. Um, but first, um, this is, um, I'm going to try to show y'all, or explain to you, the impact of the revolution um, and the PD. I'd like to thank the Dollamore Foundation, the Lake City Creative Alliance, Darfield's team, Dale Smith in the back. Now, Dale is um, my right hand man. If you hadn't been to uh, Three Rivers Across the Way, you need to go see uh, his displays. And I don't have anything to do. I, I just research. Dale puts things together. And Zach Blankenship is, you know, I'm paralyzed. He's my right hand man. And Dale has a musket, and Zach has a sword. So if anybody leaves before time, you're in trouble. Okay? And thank y'all for coming, really. Thank you so much. The French and Indian War. That's when it all started. In 1754. The French and the Indians fought the British. And it lasted to 1763. And the British won. And we got land to the Appalachian Mountains. And they started taxing us. Remember, Zach, where are you? Come here, hurry. Got books. I've got my books. How many of you, I'm telling your age now, the orange book? How many of you had that in eighth grade? That's probably the best South Carolina history book ever written. Okay? It gives a whole chapter of the American Revolution. We advertising right now. If you don't have a book by James, you need to get one. James is the son of Major, <coughs> Major John James. He was a 16 year old and at 84 he wrote the history of Marion. The Swamp Fox. No. Oh, the Swamp Fox. There's another book you need to get for your library. It's about ranking. Okay? Bodie's History of Williamsburg County. I think Miss Mary. Mary Kelly has a book in the back and she can sell it to you. The History of Williamsburg. The Swamp Fox, Robert Bass. Would you believe that book was written by a guy from Scranton, South Carolina? Okay, back in the 50s. Excellent book. If you go to the archives, you can pick up this book here. It used to sell for a dollar. I don't know how much it costs now. But it is a county by county uh, uh, 
kind of like a survey of all the Revolutionary War um, battles uh, in the state. So b before you leave tonight, I about purchase a book from Three Rivers in the back. And each one of you should have uh, eight sheets. Since the revolution, <laughs> I'm covering 18 months of military history. There's no way possible y'all are gonna get out before 12 o'clock tonight. <laughs> so I'm gonna condense it as much as possible, okay? All right. The first phase of the revolution started in New England for two years. Then it went to the middle colonies from 1777 to 1778. Horatio Yates became known as the hero of Saratoga. Saratoga was a battle that the French, after the battle was over, the French came in, came to our rescue. Okay? <coughs> then we had the Southern Campaign from 1780 to 1782. We call it the Southern Campaign. The first attempt was at Sullivan's Island. Okay. What does our flag look like? We got a crescent moon, right? And a palmetto flag, I mean palmetto log. Okay, the first attempt was uh, the British tried to take Charleston and the cannonballs would seep into the log, um, palmetto logs, and actually save the day. At the same time, you know, we, did, we think that the white people were the only people that fought in the revolution. We had 50 PD Indians, Waccamo Indians, Shiraw Indians, and Catawba Indians fighting in um, Sullivan's Island under the command of John Irving. And they all participated. This is a picture of the campaign that really started the whole affair in South Carolina. It was called the Fall of Charleston, May 12th, 1780. Started in March, ending in May, May 12th, and the Americans gave up, especially the South Carolinians. Benjamin Lincoln was the commander, and we have Sir Henry Clinton, who is the commander of the American, I mean, the British forces in America. Soon after the fall of Charleston, he goes back up to New York. Horatio Yates. Horatio Yates is the history, I mean, the hero of Saratoga. July to December 1780. And Nathaniel Green, George Washington's right-hand man. He becomes the commander in December 1780 to the end of the war. Now we can divide the state up. 
the wizard owl, Andrew Pickens. What county is Clemson in? Pickens County. Pickens County. Thank you, Miss Pafford. The Fighting Gamecock, Thomas Sumter, and the Swamp Fox, Francis Marion. They fought a different battle than the British could handle at the time. The British would line up and they would fire. Then they would proceed to have another line and they would fire. And then a third line and then they would fire. But these folks fought where? From bushes, from the swamps, everywhere. Okay? Okay, after the Battle of um, Charleston, we have a supply line going from Charleston to Monk's Corner, to Nelson Ferry, all the way up to Camden. Okay? You got to have a supply line, right? You got to feed, you got to have weapons, you got to have all kinds of stuff. And you got to have these things. Francis Marion, Thomas Sumter, the Wizard Owl, interrupted all these supply lines. Born Wallace, Carlton, and Weems. I couldn't find a picture of Weems. I don't know why. Uh, Weems is a, a, a nasty name. You know, when my grandfather was living, he would not allow me to say a word in this house. And I don't mean a dirty word. That word was Sherman. He would not allow me to say General Sherman in his house. And a lot of folks, after the revolution, Reims was a bad word at the time. Y'all get out your sheet now. Look at this sheet. I thought, you know, when I was coming up, I thought that all the battles were fought in New England. That meant Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maine, Vermont. But look all the battles that were fought in South Carolina. A third of the battles that were fought in the American Revolution was fought here in South Carolina. And then another third, where was it fought? Right here in our backyard. 35 plus battles were fought by Francis Marion. It's amazing. Y'all have another ba um, sheet, and we'll go through this real quick. Like, um, I assume that y'all are very educated, and you can read a map. This is this is from July um, to December of 1780. Look how many battles. Marin's Brigade. 57, 53 of them was documented as being part of Francis Marion. 
Now that doesn't mean that he actually fought and he won. He had maybe Peter O'Ree or other, say, majors that fought for him. Then in 1782, kind of dying down a little bit. This didn't get making. All right, the yellow sheet, the big yellow sheet, uh, is uh, what I call the ring of fire. Now you can see a little green dot and then a circle. That's an hour from Lake City. You can travel within an hour's time to one or two or three battles that were fought in South Carolina. So it's your fault you don't know anything about the American Revolution and the PD. Okay? After the night. Okay. After the fall of Charleston, we have a guy named Captain, how you pronounce Sam Mack? Captain Arson. Arson. Okay. He is the commander of the troops down in Georgetown, and we have a guy named Major John James. Major John James is the commander of the Williamsburg Militia. They vote him to go down to Georgetown and say, hey, what's up, Cap? What are the conditions? What are the conditions that we uh, um, are going by by this pardon that Clinton said? We've got to go by. You know, if the British left us alone, we would have been British citizens today. But no, they messed us up. And I'll tell you why in a few minutes. Okay? He, the captain says, I shall require unqualified submission from them. And as for you, Major James, I will hang you. James took a chair and the captain threw a sword and who won? James won. He got on his horse named Thunder, rode back to King Street, and he told the Klansmen. Now one reason why I'm wearing this kilt is because of the fact is that my people fought for the revolution. The Hannah clan. And we were tight-knit folks. The Jameses were very tight. The McCartries were very tight. All these families were very tight and they were were the Catholics were they Methodists were they Baptists no. they were Presbyterians and you know about these Presbyterians <laughs> okay so all these clansmen, they get together. And this is the nucleus of Francis Marion's brigade. <coughs> Peter O'Ree takes care of King Street. 
We got Robert McCartry. How many of you have been to Robert McCartry's grave and this crowd today? We got two. It's not but 10 miles away. It's 10 miles away. And he, above all, now I, I rank Francis Marin as number one. But William McCartney, Robert McCartney is number two in my book. Tell you why. Where is he buried? Where is he buried? At Roper Crossroads. Okay. So Robert McCartney takes care of Cedar Swan, um, Black Mango, John James takes care of this area of Lynch's Lake. And then uh, John McCartney takes care of um, the southern part of Black River. And then we have another group in Marion County under John Irvin and a guy named Hugh Gals. There is a town in Marion County named for him. Anybody know? It's called Galsboro. Marion is named for Hugh Gals. So we have six divisions, okay? Maybe 600 people, okay? 600 people will fight the, the best army in the world. That's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> On the 10th of August, Marion takes control of the Williamsburg District. Who is Francis Marion? I would say I would look like Francis Marion because my brothers used to say I had the biggest nose. My nose was born first. And then I came later. He had a French nose. He limped. He was short. He was quiet. He didn't have a uniform. And they brushed him aside. He made each person in his brigade wear a little funny little thing called what? A cockade. Right up here. To distinguish from being a Tory. Now, what is a Tory? A Tory is somebody that is loyal to the king. What is a Whig? Somebody that favored the American cause. Thank you, sir. We got an educated person right here. Okay. No, we're not going to go through all these battles. I got them for you. These are the major battles that Francis Marion fought. Okay? From the fall of Charleston, which happened May 12th, 1780, until he dismissed his band of misfits, the 15th of December, 1782. So we're talking about 18, 18 months. And I tell you, they didn't take a breath. How many did he lose? How many people did he lose during that time? Okay, now, that's a good question. I don't have the answer. But they say and I can kind of halfway prove it. At the Historical Society, we have a wall. 
and we have 3,400 names on that wall uh, signifying uh, out of 3,400, a thousand of them claim to be Francis Marion's men. Okay? Okay, we've been over who was uh, the um, people in his brigade. Now we are on the march on August the 17th, 1780, Camden Falls. Now we got Charleston, now we got Camden. We fighting way back in, in the sticks we will call 96, okay? The British has a, a port at 96. We're not concerned about that as being Williamsburg, okay? On the march, Francis Marion is at Ports Ferry. Now remember the little orange dot? That's Lake City. Nelson's Ferry, King Street, Camden. These folks went in a minute's notice. They hauled buggy. I mean, they captured and fought like a bunch of wild men. The funny thing about capturing the Continental Army after the fall of after the fall of uh, Camden, got uh, 63 people that didn't want to go with um, Francis Marion because who would want, who would want to go with folks that's not dressed as soldiers? They had all oh, calm, calm, calm and ordinary clothes. But by the time they got to Port's Ferry, three of them deserted. So 60 joined up in Marion's brigade. On the 27th of August, Major James goes to King Street and finds out what the deal is with the British. Marion's smart. He knows he doesn't have but a very few men. So he hightails it to North Carolina from Ports Ferry. Okay? From North Carolina he attacks a bunch of loyalists. And who were the loyalists? People who were loyal to the king. Okay? Ganey and Barfield. We got a bunch of Barfields around here, don't we? It's spelled different, but it's the same spelling. Okay? At Blue Savannah, Marion defeats these two guys at Blue Savannah. He's on the way back to South Carolina. Wings 
cause a lot of trouble. Y'all have seen <clears throat> the movie The Patriot? We got a movie star in the back. Dale Smith played in The Patriot. And if you ever have a chance, you need to go by uh, the his historical society and let him tell you about Mel Gibson and the movie The Patriot. Okay? But Weems kills cows, kills sheep, burns homes, and burns the Presbyterian church. <coughs> now, would you be upset if your house caught on fire? Would you be upset if your church caught on fire? It actually doubled Marion's Brigade because of what Reams did uh, during this time. He also hung a guy named Adam Cusack, took him to Society Hill, hung him in front of his wife and his children. On September 29th, we got the raid of Black Mingo. How many of you been, been to Black Mingo? All right, back at the history, Lynch's Lake, Dale Smith has a lot of artifacts from Black Mingo. He actually has artifacts that date back to 1730s from Black Mingo. Cummins Ball. John Cummins Ball actually was a neighbor of Francis Marion's brother, Benjamin. Benjamin signs his father's state's papers. And they were kind of close, you know. Plantations were not real close, but was close. They did it at night. Now, there are different versions about what happened at night. I got four different versions of what happened at the Battle of Black Mingo. More than happy to show it to you. Um, come by. But the British were scattered because it was a night, night raid. And Francis Marion captured John Cummings Ball's horse and named him Ball. Terracotta Swamp. Okay. Now, I suppose to let y'all have time enough to read this, so let me, let me give you a second to read it. Okay, Marion was looking for a guy named Harrison. And he ran him across at Terracote Swamp. He captured 150 partisans. And sends them to Shiro. We have an annual affair where uh, there is a document saying that 
uh, a guy fed a group of prisoners on the way to uh, uh, the prisoner of war camp in Shiro from Terracot Swamp. Ox Swamp. Ox Swamp uh, is in Clarendon County. So is Terracot. It was a chase. Terracot was chasing Mary, Marion was chasing Carrington, and Carlton was burning homes from Jack's Creek, which is in Clarendon County, to the High Hills, which is now in Sumter County. And Tarleton gets so fed up with Marion. He decides and says, um, you know something, fellas? I think we've had enough uh, of Francis Marion and he cussed him. Calls him a damn old fox. So he says that he's going to find the gamecock and let's forget about the damn old fox. And that's how Francis Marion got his name. Aspoo and White's Bridge. Now, how many of you in here would give up an F.U.? You've got shot. Okay. Lieutenant Gabriel Marion, the only son of his brother Gabriel. He and some more guys were looking around Georgetown. Georgetown was the place that Francis Marion wanted, the port of Georgetown. Marion's horse, Gabriel's horse, was killed. And the British captured him. And they find out that he is Francis Marion's nephew. We got a mulatto that shoots Gabriel in the chest. And it was, it says that Gabriel's linen shirt caught on fire. Well, the next day, guess what? They called Sweat, this mulatto. And one of the officers of Marion kills him. But Marion scolds him. He is furious about what the officer did. Now, little old Daniels got killed. I'd be all upset. I don't think I could feel forgiving. But Marion is that type, type person that did. Okay. We have another British soldier. The Rolf. Now, he is not like Carlton or Weems. He actually tries to make friends with the Williamsburg colony. And they like him. And they won't tell on him. Okay? But then we have the McCarthy 
rifles. We knock them out. Then, after this battle is over, for two months, we are after the town of Georgetown. Marion wants Georgetown. Why? Why? Come on, y'all. Okay. Okay. Supplies. Okay. Marion's main goal was to capture the town because <laughs> it was supplies. At the end of 1780, I wouldn't say everything was hunky-dory, but Williamsburg County kind of settled down. The middle of the uh, middle part of South Carolina under Sumter kind of settled down. And believe it or not, General, George, General John Rutledge gives Francis Marion a commission as a general. Before, he was not a general. Okay? He was a slap old colonel. Now he is a general. And he is a general from where Sumter forces are all the way to the coast. And then we have a Virginian that come. His name is Light Horse Harry Lee. Who him father? Robert E. Lee. Robert Lee Lee's daddy. He's in South Carolina. All these great guys are in this area. Cornwallis, Dalton, Light Horse Harry Lee, all these folks. This is hallowed ground, y'all. Okay. We're going to strike Georgetown. Below Monk's Corner, we got the Postel brothers. And doggone, I thought they were the Postons. But they're the Postels. Okay? Fun thing about it was, was that um, we had Captain John Postel destroying stores, turpentine, getting wrong. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, what happens? Anybody tell me? The British go after Captain John Tail. And Lee's nanny go ferry alone. Well, John, John's brother James takes it. And neither one of them lose a person in both of these battles. Hope Swamp. Okay. Watson, John Watson is commanding the Santee River. Hope Swamp is actually in Clarendon County. The 
the Americans and uh, he, he and the McCartries, the rifles, they now come out. And the Americans win the Battle of Mount Hope Swamp. The Battle of Lower Bridge. All right. If you can think on your map, if you can find Mount Hope, go east down to Santee River you'll run into uh, the lower bridge was right below King Street. We're moving toward Georgetown. Watson wants to go to King Street. Major John James takes up the planks from the bridge. Well, he has artillery. How many of you ever been to the lower bridge? Go to the lower bridge. One bank is higher than the other. John Watson sets his men up Ah. And he shoots the tops off the trees. While he's shooting the tops off the trees, the Americans under McCartry is shooting them. And they win the Battle of Lower Bridge. The next one is Weatherspoon's Ferry. Lieutenant George who? How'd you pronounce that? That Mac? Okay. He is hit in the knee during this time. 300 yards away. That's 300 football fields with a musket. That's dead. That's pretty good shooting. Pretty good shooting. Blakely's Plantation. America's win and we still going to Georgetown. The Sand Pit Bridge. What is the Sand Pit Bridge? Where is the Sand Pit River? Georgetown. Georgetown. Okay. I got a man named Scott, and his men saw the reflections of the bayonets and got afraid and didn't fire. Marion's men fell to the rear and they crossed the bridge, crossed the river. The next day, Watson loads up with two wagons. He's dead that lay there. But, but while this was going on, we got a fellow named Darwell. He goes and he captures Snow's Island. Okay? Revenge. You don't take Snow's Island away from Francis Marion. Mar Marion pursues 
300 million. The Wealth Spoons Ferry. Were they, were they catch, catchy? And McCartney's Sharpshooter's Fire and Kill. And moon, the loyalists. During this time, Green is chasing Cornwallis of North Carolina, keeping him away from his supply lines. And guess where he's going? The Yorktown. Okay. Pampico. He burns his bread. Baggage. Now, now baggage, folks, are not suitcases. Okay? They are water baggage. Baggage. Water baggages. Next to tents, every, everything. So they burn the baggages into the swamp at catfish near Pampico. Let's go find them. Let's go find them. This area is rich in military history especially Revolutionary War history. Marion has a council of war. Guess where the men want to go? They want to retreat. But Marion says, no, we're going to fight on. Lee and Marion go to Fort Watson. Okay? Fort Watson's built on an Indian mound. It's kind of on the edge now of Lake Murray. Okay? To keep things kind of moving, I'm going to move on a little quicker. Okay, if we can read this a little bit quicker. They dig a well, they fortify everything, but guess what? We outthink them. We build a tower, okay? A 40-foot tower. And we use whose rifles? McCartney's rifles. And we shoot down at them. And they have to surrender. Why? Why thinking? Steve, I mean, the seas of Fort Mott. The main thing I want you to get out of this. Sharon, I know you and Harry took a lot of time building that house across the railroad track. Would you have somebody set it on fire? Well, Miss Rebecca Mott, Rebecca Mott allowed Marion and Lee to burn her house down. 
And we have a local guy named Nathan Savage. He wraps up some rosin. And story goes, he, he has a, a bow and arrow. And he shoots it and sets the house on fire. Then we have another one that is like David and Goliath with the sling. We don't know actually what happened, but the house did catch on fire and we win the battle of Fort Mont. And this is all about Fort Mont. Now, if you would like to have a copy of these lecture notes, I'll be more than happy to, to give it to you. Short time after Fort Mott, Green meets Francis Marion for the first time. And he orders Francis Marion to go to Georgetown. Okay. Green goes to 96 and on May 28th, 1781, Marion enters the holy city of Georgetown. And this is the last battle. Utah Springs, equally divided. Probably the bloodiest battle there was in Revolutionary War history. Got 1,200 people to die, 500 Americans, 700 British, and the battlefield is not that big, okay? And then at Bowling Green, which is up in Marion County, Ganey decides to give it up. The Tories. Okay. And at Birch's Mill, which is not too far from here, we sign. Lee takes care of the British, and Francis Marion takes care of the Tories. And Cornwallis goes up to where? Yorktown. And lose. And we become a free nation. Thank y'all for coming tonight.